E. Schleter. I mean that farm foreclosures in this state are illegal in many cases. And a suit has been filed to test the validity of that law. Mike Day will have more on that at 6. And the city of Des Moines has taken action to rid the downtown area of the current problem with crows. It's a follow-up to Eileen Wickstead's story from last night at 10. We'll have more on that as well. Otherwise, Mike says a gloomy weekend coming our way with freezing rain and snow possible. Join us in 30 minutes for News 7 13. Sometimes when we reach for the stars, we fall short. But we must pick ourselves up again and press on, despite the pain. Their truest testimony will not be in the words we speak, but in the way they led their lives and in the way they lost their lives. NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Good evening from the Johnson Space Center in Houston. This is the nerve center of the space shuttle program, the training ground for the seven astronauts who were killed in Tuesday's violent explosion. And so it was fitting that this today was the site of the NASA memorial service, the formal farewell to that crew which was so representative of the many faces of America. Thousands gathered in a grassy area where so many past triumphs have been celebrated. And the short, simple program drew heroes from the past. Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon, a national goal set by the father of this young man. This is John Kennedy Jr. Military men, technicians, secretaries, the NASA family, joined by President and Mrs. Reagan, who met privately with the families of the Challenger crew. We come here grateful for the many ways we have known those whom today we mourn. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea. When his turn came, President Reagan mentioned each of the victims in his remarks, and he pledged to continue the space program. What we say today is only an inadequate expression of what we carry in our hearts. Words pale in the shadow of grief. They seem insufficient even to measure the brave sacrifice of those you loved and we so admired. We remember Dick Scobie, the commander who spoke the last words we heard from the Space Shuttle Challenger. We remember Allison Onizuka who was a child running barefoot through the coffee fields and macadamia groves of Hawaii, dreamed of someday traveling to the moon. Being an Eagle Scout, he said, had helped him soar to the impressive achievements of his career. Sometimes when we reach for the stars, we fall short, but we must pick ourselves up again and press on, despite the pain. Man will continue his conquest of space to reach out for new goals and ever greater achievements that is the way we shall commemorate our seven challenger heroes dick mike judy l ron greg and krista your families and your country mourn your passing we bid you goodbye we will never forget you. One emotional moment followed another. A jet left the flyover. The missing man formation. A final personal moment before the Reagans returned to Washington, the families to their private grieving, and NASA to its search for a cause of the tragedy that brought on all of this anguish. This memorial service understandably attracted most of the attention, but there were others around the country today as well. Services and ceremonies to honor these seven victims. NBC's John Dancy tonight takes us through some of them. For a national tragedy, there was today the healing unity of grief. Grief for astronaut Ellison Onizuka, a Japanese-American Buddhist. Ronald McNair, a black Southern Baptist. America at its best. Two women, 
a Jew, a black, an Asian, white males. Grief for Judith Resnick, a woman and a Jew. What is important is not her death, but that she lived. A life once lived can never be taken from us, will never be taken from us. It is eternal. And for Navy Commander Michael Smith, a graduate of Annapolis. pride in this remarkable person is undiminished. And finally, grief for Krista McAuliffe, not a test pilot, not one who tested death, but a teacher, one of us. After Apollo 8 showed us the first stunning pictures of the Earth, entire and whole, poet Archibald MacLeish wrote, to see the Earth as it truly is, small and blue and beautiful in that eternal silence where it floats, is to see ourselves as riders on the Earth together brothers on that bright loveliness in the eternal cold, brothers who know now they are truly brothers. Again, today, the nation was united in the brotherhood and sisterhood of grief. John Dansley, NBC News. I'll be back with more from the Johnson Space Center in just a moment. Fiber Trim, the European way to help you stay slim. Teamwork is what built America. And now teamwork has come to American banking. Local savings institutions bringing you banking nationwide, yet keeping decisions close to home. For banking that's powerful and personal, team up with us, the member near you of First Nationwide Network. I just got dentures, but with Fixident, I don't get the dentures come loose blues. <laughs> Fixident and forget it. Denture wearers can't eat everything, but with Fixident, I can feast more than just my eyes. Fixident and forget it. Fixident helps fix loose spots for a strong hole that lasts longer than any leading cream. A woman in my position can't worry about hold. Use Fixident and forget it. Strong currents off Cape Canaveral made it impossible today for a small robot submarine to search for the wreckage of the Challenger. But that search does go on, and as NBC's Robert Bazell reports tonight from the Cape, so does the search for what caused the disaster. Bob? Tom, uh, workers here at the Kennedy Space Center stopped today to watch the memorial service. But offshore, there was no let-up in the recovery operations. This Coast Guard helicopter has just located another piece of the Challenger. A crewman throws a flare to mark the spot. Small boats move in to recover the piece. Boats, helicopters, and airplanes continue to search the Atlantic today. Sonar devices on some ships located a large piece underwater. Officials think it may be the crew compartment, but so far there is no proof. The pieces recovered so far include this section of the outside of the spacecraft, with the emergency rescue hatch intact. NASA investigators are now examining thousands of pounds of debris. One major focus of the investigation, according to sources, continued to be that there was a leak in one of the solid rocket boosters. The shuttle is powered by five rockets. The three main engines get their fuel, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, from a huge external tank. The two solid rocket boosters are powered by a mixture of chemicals with the consistency of rubber. Here is some of the compound ignited in a laboratory. It burns at a very high temperature. As they burn, the main engines leave little vapor, while the solid rocket boosters create a thick plume. According to the theory, a split developed in one of the welded seams on one of the solid rocket boosters. 
This caused a tongue of hot flame to shoot at the external tank, burning a hole through it and igniting the explosive mixture of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. The solid rocket boosters are manufactured at the Morton Thiokol Company in Salt Lake City. A company spokesman had this response. Uh, when NASA announces officially that NASA is investigating something or has come to a conclusion, that's when the information becomes factual. One problem with the investigation is that the booster rockets were destroyed after the explosion because one was believed to be threatening a populated area. Only the nose cones remain. Those parachuted into the water. Tom, the latest uh, speculation among NASA officials now is that that tongue of flame from the solid rocket booster hit the explosives package on the external tank, which is designed to blow it up in case of an emergency, in case the whole shuttle is headed toward a populated area. And at the memorial service in Houston today, some NASA officials were heard to say that if only the astronauts had had a few more seconds, they might have had time to jettison those tanks, and they might have had time to make a safe return. They didn't have those few seconds. Tom? Bob, tell us now about the continuing search. How many teams have been organized by NASA, and are they divided up into debris teams and electronic signal teams and so on? A lot of hard work. Uh, some people are focusing on what's being recovered from the ocean. Other people are looking at the computer data. Other people are studying the engines. Every possible bit of information is being assembled by the panel, which is, is meeting. And they, they promised us just uh, a few minutes ago that they will have some sort of statement late Sunday evening. All right, thanks very much. Bob is hell at the Cape tonight. At the same time, youngsters around the country are chipping in and collecting pennies, nickels, and dollars to help pay for a new space shuttle to replace the Challenger. The idea for that fund came from a nonprofit space education foundation. The cost of a new space shuttle is about $2 billion, however. Another fund has also been started by the National Education Association in memory of Krista McAuliffe. This money will be used to help other teachers take on pioneering projects. Hey, you're eating brand cereal because it's good for you, right? Guess what's in it besides bran? Sugar. Up to 22 added teaspoons a box. Over a period of time, that can really add up. And up! Introducing a new brand cereal, Nabisco Shredded Wheat and Bran. The first high-fiber cereal without a grain of added sugar in it. Or even salt. New Nabisco Shredded Wheat and Bran. If you're eating bran because it's good for you, why add sugar and salt? Nabisco. I think a little higher. When my head hurts, no painting looks good. In the past, I would have taken aspirin or Tylenol. But today, I take Advil. In its first year, doctors have recommended Advil over 500,000 times. You see, just one Advil is as effective as two regular strength Tylenol or two regular aspirin. That's good to know. Advil got rid of my headache. And it didn't upset my stomach. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. Your days go by fast, your work never seems to end. That's why Whirlpool cooking products are easy to clean. With cooktops that wipe up in short order, ovens that do the cleaning for you, and performance you can count on. Whirlpool, ranges and ovens. We're making your world a little easier. Haiti's president for life, Jean-Claude Duvalier, insisted today that he remains in control of his country. He declared a state of siege. This morning, the White House said that Duvalier had been overthrown and that he had fled the country, only to discover later that it was wrong. The tiny Caribbean nation, the poorest in the Western Hemisphere, is experiencing its most widespread anti-government unrest in years. In the last two months alone, at least nine people have been killed, and today the violence spread to Haiti's capital. NBC's Ann Garrels reports tonight from the State Department on this growing unrest. As President Reagan flew to Houston, White House spokesman Larry Speaks announced the fall of the Haitian government, saying the government of Haiti has collapsed, the leadership, including Duvalier, had fled the country. But Duvalier immediately denied this on Haitian television, saying the president is here strong, firm as a monkey's tail. A Haitian embassy official in Washington also denied White House reports. President Jean-Claude Duvalier continues to carry out his responsibilities as head of state. The administration had egg on its face. Uh, do I have anything on Haiti? The conflicting reports, even conflicting rumors. Our information is that there has been no change of government, 
that martial law has been declared and all non-government radio stations close. The international airport at Port-au-Prince is open. Duvalier has caused the U.S. embarrassment and frustration ever since he took over from his father in 1971. Though not quite as repressive as his father, Papa Doc, Baby Doc has ruled the poorest nation in the hemisphere irresponsibly. Duvalier and his wife have lived like kings in their impoverished country. In the absence of any organized opposition, the U.S. has poured in aid, hoping to encourage reforms. Since the Pope told Haitians things have to change in their country three years ago, unrest has spread. The U.S. doesn't believe there's communist backing. A former minister of finance agrees. Massive corruption uh, combined with the excessive uh, repression mm -hmm. are, in my view, the two basic reasons why people are saying now enough is enough. The U.S. has also had enough. Because of human rights abuses, the State Department is now recommending a cut in aid to Haiti. This could well undermine Duvalier even more. Ann Garrels, NBC News, the State Department. Those unfounded reports of Duvalier's downfall led to jubilation in Miami's large community of Haitian refugees. The people there said they believed the initial White House announcement. Hundreds jammed the streets thinking that Duvalier had been overthrown. Last night, a riot was set off after someone in the crowd celebrating another rumored overthrow shouted, Long live Duvalier. A woman was killed then. Nine other people were injured. In Minneapolis today, Mary Lund, who became the first woman to receive an artificial heart, underwent surgery to replace that artificial heart with the heart of a teenage girl. The donor heart became available last night, and it was flown from Billings, Montana, where the girl had died. Lon was kept alive for 45 days with her artificial heart. The GD Searle Company said today that it was withdrawing its two interauterine devices from the United States market. They are sold under the names Tatum 7 and CU 7. That's the most prescribed IUD in the nation. They have been the subject of hundreds of lawsuits, and Searle cited its high legal cost and problems in getting adequate insurance. A moderately strong earthquake today rattled parts of nine states, Washington, D.C., and Ontario. It lasted for about 30 seconds. It had a magnitude of five on the Richter scale. It was centered 30 miles northeast of Cleveland on the shore of Lake Erie. It caused tall buildings to sway. It knocked out a few power generators and shook people up, but apparently it caused no injuries. <laughs> The big boys eat. If pure and simple, toasted wheat. A funky taste that's not too sweet. It's just good, crunchy stuff. And I like that. Can't get enough of that. Pure and simple, toasted wheat. Now go get your wheaties. That's what this girl eats. Watch out, big boys. Thanks a lot, Citibank. Ordinary Visa and MasterCards won't do. No, Citibank always has to be better. Just by using them, my son earns bonuses called City Dollars. They save him up to 40% on nice gifts. But does he get me a grandfather clock or a colored television? No, not my son. Come on, Mom, let's go. Come on, just a few more miles, Mom. Keep pedaling down that Citibank's road. Visa and, and MasterCard. It's Citibank that makes them better. Well, at least one of them's gold. How about some coffee? It's decaffeinated. Half a cup's fine. You drink decaf. Sure, and when I find one that's got a full flavor, I'll have a full cup. This one does. Brim? It's got full, rich flavor. Now this is a find. Fill it to the rim. With the full, rich taste of Brim, decaffeinated coffee. South African President P.W. Botha said today that there should be some changes in his country's apartheid laws but he stopped short of making any substantive proposals. He did, however, make an intriguing suggestion on another issue. NBC's John Cochran reports now from Cape Town. The annual opening of Parliament. For the have-nots, the blacks, it's all very remote. For blacks cannot vote for members of Parliament. Still, some blacks hoped President P.W. Bodo would change that as he announced his government's plans for 1986. All South Africans must be placed 
in a position where they can participate in government through their elected representatives. We have outgrown the outdated colonial system of paternalism as well as the outdated concept of apartheid. He's not really dealt with the key issue, which is political power sharing. But what did surprise Tutu was President Bodo's proposal to release black leader Nelson Mandela. I'm conscious of the fact that Mr. Mandela has been in prison for a long time and that he's now in his 60s. President Bodo suggested exchanging Mandela for three prisoners held by communist governments. A South African officer, Captain Bainant Dutoy, accused by the Angolan government of attempted sabotage. And in the Soviet Union, scientist Andrei Sakharov and Jewish dissident Anatoly Sharansky. Bodo's proposal for the unlikely prisoner exchange is meant partly for American consumption. President Bodo today was trying to persuade Washington and Wall Street that he is a reasonable man and a worthy ally against communism. John Cochran, NBC News, Cape Town. Joseph Zavindi is the leader of rebel forces trying to overthrow the Marxist government of Angola in Africa, and he is currently in Washington looking for additional aid. Today, Zavindi said the Chevron Corporation's Gulf Oil subsidiary is one of his targets. Zavindi, who met this week with President Reagan, claimed that Gulf is helping that war continue. With the Philippines elections just one week away now, there was new violence today. A military truck protecting a supporter of President Marcos was attacked by suspected communist rebels. Five soldiers and two of the gunmen were killed. Meanwhile, an independent election watchdog group implied that the Marcos government was trying to disrupt the voting by distributing money, weapons, and fake ballots. Moms have the neatest way to ease you into things. Like when you were a kid and needed a laxative, she wouldn't give you a harsh laxative, no. She'd say, Mom will make it better. Bet she meant this, Mom. Phillips Milk of Magnesia, M-O-M. -M. And even when you're grown up, Mom gives you easy relief, not harsh. Doctors recommend Milk of Magnesia. See, Mom knows what's good for you. You know, no matter how old you are, nobody treats you better than Mom. Come take a trip in a 1986 luxury car built for the 1990s Cadillac DeVille. Cadillac comfort and roominess, of course. But this Cadillac offers more. It thinks, monitors its own functions, keeps its driver apprised of changing conditions. The most sophisticated engineering and electronics of any DeVille ever. But this technological marvel retains classic luxury. Now available with 7.9% GMAC financing. You're on your way. The world is opening its door. I never understood when Mom made me clean my plate because there were places where kids were starving. Now I'm about to walk into a Dow laboratory to work on new ways to help grow more and better grain for those kids who so desperately need it. Yes, you can make a difference in what tomorrow brings. I can't wait. Here at the Johnson Space Center, where the primary focus usually is on some monumental scientific task, the twin missions since Tuesday have been to find out just what went wrong and to help the surviving families through this ordeal. Tonight, NBC's Don Oliver reports that one family was ready to talk about this awful experience. Pilot Mike Smith also suiting up. Mike to his friends and family, a much decorated Vietnam Navy flyer, dedicated to the exploration of space. The mission of Shuttle 51L was his first. There are now seven new oak trees in the Houston suburb where Mike Smith lived, dedicated to his memory by his neighbors. A solemn procession left the Smith house this morning for the memorial service. Two brothers, a sister and their families, in-laws and close friends. An emotional time. Mike Smith's brother, Pat. Oh, Mike loved his country. He died for his country. We remember Michael Smith, who earned enough medals as a combat pilot to cover his chest.
Cody. Jane and Mike Smith had been married 18 years. Their son Scott, 17. Medals and the Vietnamese cross of gallantry with silver star. Allison, 14. And Aaron, 8. Fought. Listening to words of praise for a man they say will never die in their hearts. After the service, the Smith home was open to friends. Through it all, Jane Smith retained her composure. Her husband, she said, had no doubts about his role in the space program and left her with no doubts. There was never any doubt in my children's mind or my mind that he was not on the right road. Our eight-year-old said, Dad is, is still living. The, he lives in our hearts. If we forget about him, then he dies. But if we remember him and do our best for him, then he will live forever. You and Charlotte. Jane Smith says that if the shuttle program continues, she'll be fine, and that the prayers and love of the country will keep her strong. Don Oliver, NBC News, Houston. This has been such an emotionally wrenching week for all of us, a draining experience. At the end of it, we're left with our own personal impressions of what we have been through. And so many of those impressions are shaped by those unforgettable image, which were at once horrifying, haunting, and yes, even beautiful. This has been, after all, a week that we'll never forget. Good morning. This is shuttle launch control, and uh, the temperature at the launch pad right now is 24 degrees. There they are, the crew of Mission 51L, including teacher and space participant and the first private citizen to fly in space, Krista McAuliffe. Big smiles today, confidently getting into the van. MS3, LTD, are you loud clear? Good morning. Good morning, are you loud clear? We have main engine start, four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave. Challenger, go with throttle up. Challenger, go with throttle up. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity, 2,900 feet per second. Altitude, 9 nautical miles. Downrange distance, 7 nautical miles. Obviously a major malfunction. The Challenger crew was pulling us into the future, and we'll continue to follow them. We had hoped to push this day back forever, but that was not to be, and we all, I guess, intuitively knew that. I felt as if uh, my whole body blew up inside when I saw that, and I can just never be as shocked as I am now. While it was terribly sad, there were things about it that we want to remember that were good. They Joe. Um, had a dream and they went for it. Sometimes when we reach for the stars, we fall short. But we must pick ourselves up again and press on. bid you goodbye, we will never forget you. Peter the Great, an epic world premiere event about a man who changed history forever and became Russia's greatest hero. I'm going to drag you, kicking and screaming if I have to, into the modern world. An incredible adventure is about to begin. Peter the Great, Sunday. Coming up tonight from your news center. A 135-year-old Iowa law may end up saving hundreds of family farms. Federal budget cuts may cost you a lot of city services you've come to expect. And we'll talk live with an economist about the future of the 86th state economy. Mike with a gloomy forecast and Jeff with sports. All of that coming up next. At Pigeons, we're having a red tag furniture clearance. 
taking the wraps off two showrooms of beautiful, sale-priced furniture, chests, famous name sofas, sleepers and sectionals, tables and chairs, dining rooms, bedrooms, lamps, tables and buffets, whole showrooms priced so low that if you get there early, you'll find exactly what you're looking for. Quality furniture at Red Tag Clearance Prices. Hurry to Pigeon's Red Tag Clearance. During National Meat Week, serve USDA Choice Beef Chuck Roast, just 99 cents a pound, along with hy vee cut or French-style green beans, 29 cents. Other savings include banquet frozen dinners, 79 cents, and white cloud bathroom tissue, 85 cents. The more you shop, the more you'll save at hy vee Where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. Ramsey Pontiac Subaru has over 200 new Pontiacs, all with low 7.9% financing right now. Ramsey Pontiac Subaru, we sell excitement. You're watching WHO-TV Des Moines, Iowa's news center. And now, Scott Polk and Susie Robinette. Chief Meteorologist Mike Lozano. And Jeff Byam for with Sports. This is News Center 13 at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. An almost forgotten law has now been remembered. And it is likely to stir up trouble for Iowa's agricultural lenders. The law was written 135 years ago. It's called the Homestead Law. It seems every time there's a farm crisis, the Homestead Law pops up. As Ag Director Mike Day reports tonight, this time it could save hundreds of families their homes. February 8, 1985. Sheriff's deputies from six counties converged on the Elmer Steffes farm near Audubon. At the request of the local bank, they hauled off machinery and livestock. Now the Federal Land Bank is foreclosing on the Steffes farmland, and it would appear there is little chance Elmer and his wife Pat can avoid being kicked out of their home. What little hope there may be for the Steffeses and hundreds of other farm families to remain on their farms can be found in little-known Iowa law written more than a hundred years ago. It's called the Iowa Homestead Law. In short, it says during a foreclosure, a farmer's homestead, meaning house and up to 40 acres around it, is exempt from the initial sale. Only after everything else is sold can the lender foreclose on the homestead. Attorney and U.S. Senate hopeful John Rorick is taking the law to court. He's filed a suit on behalf of Elmer Steffes and three other farmers, claiming they've been robbed of their legal rights. We're asking the court to go back and order new sales so that they would have to again sell the land under the judgment. At that point in time, the, the farmer could bid in the homestead. Rorick has asked that the suit against the Federal Land Bank be expanded to a class action suit, which might then make all Iowa farmers who've been sold out by a sheriff in recent years eligible for resale. And this is simply another step in our effort to keep people out there on the land until we can get uh, some some stability in this agricultural economy. Early predictions are this case will wind up being decided in the Iowa Supreme Court. Mike Day, New Center 13. An update now on Graham Rudman. A good chunk of federal money is going to be cut off and we may all feel the effects. The federal revenue sharing program has been sending back some of our tax dollars to local cities here in Iowa for the last 13 years. But under Graham Rudman, the program and money Iowa cities have been receiving is going to stop. The League of Iowa Municipalities says when the money stops September the 30th, it could put the majority of Iowa's 900-plus cities into a budget tailspin, since most cities depend on the money to help provide services. Just about every aspect of the constituents in a community are going to be directly or indirectly affected by the termination of revenue sharing. A person who might get money through a weatherization program right now in the city of Des Moines or in Ankeny might not find that money available next year because the revenue sharing money will have terminated and the city has to respect the fact that they can't raise their property taxes any higher. The bottom line is that the program will disappear. Harpster says the only way to save the federal revenue sharing program is to lobby Congress by February the 25th. He says if the program is stopped, a lot of the services we may take for granted are also going to be stopped. Well, with the news of Graham Rudman, what Iowa's economists would like to hear these days is that the state's economy will pull out in 1986 and bring more money into the state's coffers. 
Latest figures just released indicate Iowa's economy in 1985 remained about the same. And those who follow the numbers very closely are saying that is good news because it could have been much worse. Joining us now is the chief economist for the state of Iowa, Harvey Siegelman, who can hopefully shed some light for us on the state's budget, what came out in 1985, as well as what lies ahead for the year of 1986. First of all, is there somewhat of a surprise that because of all the ag economy not looking so good in 85, that the numbers were perhaps as strong as they were, the fact that we remained the same? Well, Susie, while the ag economy is certainly an important factor and what happens in the ag economy trickles into most of the rest of the state's economy, there are some components that are protected from the impact. Uh, about 25% of the income that Iowans earn comes from dividends and interests, and about 12-15% uh, comes from uh, 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 Social Security payments and uh, federal transfers of that sort. This, this helps insulate us from the full impact of the, of the uh, farm uh, crisis. Mm -hmm. Harvey, of course, oil prices have been plummeting in the past couple of weeks, and that's good for all of us at the gasoline pumps. What's the long-term effect on our state economy of having oil prices so low? Well, if oil prices uh, continue to uh, go down, it will uh, relieve the pressure on uh, the inflation impact and give the Federal Reserve an opportunity to uh, bring interest rates down. Uh, that will uh, help us uh, by uh, allowing uh, more foreign markets to take advantage of our, our Iowa grain. Should help out our farmers then? We hope. Okay, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Scott? If you need help paying your utility bills, you may qualify for assistance you didn't even know existed. Officials with the Office of Neighborhood Development here in Des Moines say 7,700 Des Moines families have received assistance so far this winter. But there's enough money left to help another 2,000 families. Here's a chart to see if you may qualify. As an example, if you have a family of two and you don't make more than $10,575 a year, you qualify. For a family of four, it's $15,975. If you'd like more information on this program, call this number, 243-4568. And coming up next from News Center 13. Iowa has a new Supreme Court judge. We'll introduce you to him. And a fun-filled Des Moines landmark plans a very special opening that we want to tell you about. Stay with us. You're a soybean farmer and you're ready to plant. Getting a good stand is critical to reaching your yield goals. Rather than risk replanting and decreased yield due to early season diseases, you go for beans treated with Apron. Apron systemic fungicide from Gustafson controls early season infection from Phytophthora root rot and Pythium. Apron coats the seed's external layers, then penetrates the seed coat, providing systemic protection up to 21 days.